Mais humor e menos motor. Com traços únicos e sarcasmo, fomos conversar com o ativista e cartunista Andy Singer. Vamos lá ver? Andy, você pode nos contar quem é você? Eu sou Andy Singer e uh, eu vivo em St. Paul, Minnesota, que uh, é São Paulo. Um, and it's in the north of the United States, near the Canadian border. And, uh, but I've also lived in California. Um, and I'm a cartoonist and an illustrator. And I'm also an activist, a uh, transportation activist, um, both in favor of bicycles and in, against highways and cars. Da onde veio a inspiração da bike na tua vida? A fairly long time. I've never owned a car. And Uh, when I was in college, uh, you had to take physical education um, class. You were, it was required to take like a semester, two semesters of. So one of the classes I took was bike touring. I mean, I remember I've always bicycled since I was a little kid. I, um, I was born in New York City, and uh, I was saying to someone else that I can remember when my parents taught me how to ride a bike, um, and the feeling of freedom, you know, of just being able to go wherever you wanted to go. And uh, so when I, and I still, I, I liked bikes, but I didn't think about cars and I didn't think about transportation or any issues or anything. But when I got to college, I took um, a, a class in bike touring and they taught you how to fix your bike. And um, I started using it more for everyday transportation to get to school. And, um, and then when I graduated, Uh, I knew that I wanted to make cartoons and illustrations and it's, you don't make a lot of money. It's, a, it's, it's not a very uh, lucrative business. So I knew I had to live very cheap. And um, so I was getting around everywhere by bicycle. And this was in the 1980s. And uh, there was no bicycle lanes in the United States. There was very little infrastructure. You were just biking in the street with cars. And so I started making cartoons about you know, my everyday life. I think it's there's a worldwide movement, you know, by people for nicer cities. You know, people have realized that too many cars are make your city ugly and like make your city dangerous and you can't walk where you want and you I feel like walking to be able to walk where you want is like a human right, you know, because when you're born You, you walk, you learn to walk, and like, um, there are many bridges and places where I can't walk over them, you know, which is crazy. Um, and no one seems to think there's anything wrong with that, you know, or, or the power, oftentimes the powers that be in different cities, the government thinks, oh, that's okay, you know, or, but no, it's not okay. And, uh, um, you know, I, I, I don't know, I, I, uh, It, when you bicycle, I, I said to somebody, uh, did you ever see the movie The Matrix? Yes. yes yeah. Sure. It's like being unplugged from The Matrix because you start to see your city how it really is. You know, you see that, oh, this intersection is terrible. You know, and so I think all over the world, people, you know, once you start to bicycle or walk around your city, you start to see that, oh, this is terrible. There's too many cars. You know, this, they drive too fast. We need to, like, make it better. And, and uh, I think... Probably Europe was the first, you know, uh, places like Copenhagen or, or Amsterdam or um, uh, Groningen uh, or some of those cities like started to uh, tame cars and, be, you know, have car free sections. Or they, they also had medieval, old medieval cities like in um, Santiago in Spain or uh, where there was no cars. Um, but now the US in the 1990s and 2000s, the United States, Brazil, um, lots of other places, even India, I went to Mumbai, um, people are starting to think about, oh, maybe we shouldn't have so many cars, you know, we need places to bike, we, you know, they're thinking about these things. Você acredita que cartoon é um jeito bem humorado de protestar? Uh, I don't know, I mean, I, I, um, I make cartoons, a lot of my cartoons are just about my day-to-day -day life, you know, so if, um, uh, what's an example, I don't know, like, um, Like, uh, I, well, I'm, I'm working at the computer, and you know how on a Windows computer, they used to have the, the pages would fly from, one, from the globe to the file, like this? And, and it, rem yeah, so it reminded me of dreaming when you're sleeping, you know, so I make a cartoon about that. I, I don't know, or like, um, you know, if I have uh, an argument with somebody, maybe I'll make a cartoon about it whatever it is. So like because I bicycle all the time, I make cartoons about bicycling. 
Or I go to meetings, I go to public meetings where people say crazy things and you're like, oh, I got to make a cartoon about this. I don't know. And partly you make it to make yourself feel better, um, you know, to, to blow off steam. I, I don't know what the expression for that in Portuguese. Uh, no, no I, yeah. Um, sorry. No, uh, no but, uh, but, yeah, I mean, like, if you were a writer, you know, or you were a photographer, every day you take pictures and you take pictures of your, your house or your kids or your, you take pictures of the world around you. And so I draw cartoons and I draw cartoons about. So cartoon is your way to take pictures of the world. So. Yeah. And actually bicycle and transportation cartoons are a very small percentage of what I make. I make cartoons about everything, politics, um, you know, art, philosophy. Um, I do a lot of commercial illust uh, illustration for people's websites and for, you know, but because um, it, it was the way I got sucked into being an activist, you know, because I was bicycling around and I was like, oh, there's no bike lanes, this is terrible, and then you start to meet other people who think the same way, and this was in the early 1990s um, when they were just starting critical mass bike rides in San Francisco, and so... I met other people at that, and you know, you organize with other people, and you try to fix the problem. And Conte-nos um pouco, de onde veio a ideia de fazer esse livro? There was a a guy named Randy Gent. Um, I think his name's still in here. Randy Gent, and they there used to be in the 1990s um, a, a magazine called the Car Free Times uh, that was in Northern California, and it was. Um, a man named Jan Lundberg, and he was the only person in the United States who was talking about this and had like a magazine. And Randy Gant worked with him, and they they would edit this. Uh, it came out like four times a year, um, the Car Free t Car Free Times. And they eventually went different ways. And Randy moved to Europe, and he started um, Car Busters. There was a used to be a um, an organization called Car Busters in Europe. Like Ghostbusters. Yeah, like Ghostbusters, and. Uh, that was part of a car-free alliance in Europe, and this was also in the 1990s. And they wanted to give away images. I used to draw things for um, for the car-free times, and uh, they wanted we wanted to give away images so that people who were doing engaging in activism or critical mass could make flyers. Or or when I started cartooning, there was no internet. You know, it was like uh, you Xerox things, you know, made photocopies and passed them out. You made zines, you know, fanzines. And so um, that was a way of, of being propaganda, of like putting out ideas. And so um, we had the idea to make a book, you know, that people could make photocopies from. And, and where the back of the book, you would put organizations, list all the organizations that were devoted to uh, stopping cars and promoting bicycles. And Great. that was the idea for it. Great. Yeah. We, originally, we had a CD-ROM that came with it that had all the cartoons as uh, computer files. Yeah. So, you know, people could take it and, like, make flyers or whatever. So that was the idea.